Banking and Finance Review Awards reflect the innovation, achievement, strategy, progressive and inspirational changes taking place within the global financial community. The awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes, prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. This time we're pleased to present two awards to Dixtior. Dixtior is a Portuguese consultancy company that began operating in 2013. Based in new offices in Lisbon, Portugal, the company develops and implements global concepts and sophisticated solution software tailored to the needs of the company. Dixtior provides consulting for management and process re-engineering, outsourcing for application development and support, and tailor-made solutions for accounting and risk analysis. The company vision is to provide state-of-the-art services that will make it recognized as a reference company in the Portuguese and other community of Portuguese language country markets. Dextia has won two awards from Global Banking and Finance Review, Best New IT Consultancy Provider Portugal 2017 and Best New Software Provider Portugal 2017. We were glad to welcome CEO Dr. Rui Vicente to our London Stock Exchange Studios, who accepted the awards from GBAF's Oksana Greco, after we spoke to Dr. Vicente about Dixtior and its fast-growing success. Dr. Vicente, welcome to London. Thank you for taking time to talk to us today. And indeed, congratulations on the awards from Global Banking and Finance. Thank you. It's a huge pleasure to be here in London. And of course, it's a huge honor to receive those, those prizes from, from you. Uh, that uh, may be a boost in our company for sure. I think it's really important. Well, I'd love to talk to you about the company more. Uh, Dixtior, tell me a little bit about how it was set up and some of the, the history behind it. Yeah, we are now making five years in February, next February. Um, three people get together. Uh, we have all, always worked for the financial services, meaning in, in credits or in, in um, compliance, um, Some one of them in, in IT, I am an, as an economist, as a consultant. And uh, we get together, we were working for another company and we thought, why don't we do something for ourselves? Why? Because we thought that we can do something better and different from what was going on. And that's how we started. So five years ago, uh, we started this company, this Dixier, this journey, as we call it. It's been an adventure. Uh, at the beginning, we were three persons. Fortunately, today we're almost 50. So in five years, it's a huge growth for a Portuguese market. Um, and that's been the, 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 the journey uh, for, for this five years. But obviously, there must have been challenges along the way. Tell us what a they are. A lot of challenges. Were like, yeah. The first one is to enter the market of consultancy. You know, you have the big four. Everybody knows the big four companies. Uh, and suddenly, you have Dixier on the market uh, trying to compete with them. And uh, um, I think that we took one year to be starting to be recognized uh, on the market and to, 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 to companies, to our customers, to our clients, uh, to understand that we can offer something different from these big four companies. Of course, they are here in the market for, for several years and they are good in what they do. But I think there are some parts, some specializations that we can be as good or better than them. But this, this is the most effort that we have, the most challenged thing that we have, and it's still our day-to-day -day basis, is to, to fight this uh, recognition. We have to, to build this recognition and that's the reason also that this award is really important for us. Now, I know as an organization you specialize in consulting. Tell us a little bit about the consulting services you do. Yeah, basically what we have done is, uh, um, our days, uh, big companies and all the markets uh, talk about GRC. Basically this means governance, risk management and compliance. And there's where we, as I told you back the history that of us as employees in other companies have done. And I thought that it was something important for, for being present on the market with specialization on this, on governance, risk management and compliance. And our consulting services focus these three main areas. In terms of governance, helping companies to, to improve or to design their, their, their governance rules, uh, how, how the, the, the administrations should rule themselves, uh, the, the, the company, the obligations the, with regulators, with employees, um, making all these concerns now with bribery and things like that. Then uh, uh, risk management, the basic story of, of all our work, because for example you met Sonia outside. Sonia has worked with credit risk for a lot of time. Uh, Mario have developed uh, um, several solutions for, for credit risk also and I've been working on, on these areas also. So. In, in risk management, we can go from liquidity risk management to credit risk management, uh, um, all these areas. And 
every company um, needs as a different need. So I think that that was important to have a company also that could provide uh, some specific stuff and knowledge to the to the needs of the clients. Once again, facing the, this combat from the big four consulting mm -hmm. companies and compliance, because compliance in the last few years has been uh, uh, overwhelming the companies all over the world, uh, basically in Europe and the United States, of course. But it goes to, to the rest of the globe. And uh, uh, if you want to have business with England or with Portugal or with the United States, you have to comply with the rules that are applied in, in, in the, these countries. And of course, European Union, England and the United States are always leading on, on these rules. So that's, that's why we are in the market. Well, I think we'll come on to compliance in, yeah. in just a moment. Uh, let's uh, look at uh, some of the, the, the evolutions of services that you provided, for instance, anti-money uh, laundering, AML and so on. Tell us a bit more about those. Yeah, in anti-money laundering, it was our first solution, our own developed solution. It was our biggest uh, um, goal. It was to have a solution in the market that can be competitive in terms of price and also, of course, competitive to to the other solutions that you have on the market and you have several very well known uh, in the market. So another challenge, you, you asked me for challenges, once again <laughs> it's the recognition and to put a new one uh, working. Well, we've developed a, a, a solution, an AML solution based on risk management, once again the history of our company and I think this is the biggest difference for, for us to the, to, the, to, the, to the other solutions in the market. So we built a, a solution for banks uh, where we can be online at every time, checking every single transaction that is made uh, in, a, in a bank, daily bank. It doesn't matter if it's a small bank, if it's a huge bank, uh, um, it doesn't matter the size. We have the capability to do that, to, to, to monetize, to analyze and to give alerts of probably uh, uh, transactions that may incur in anti-money laundering or financing terrorism. What we have done is uh, um, we changed a little bit because we believe that uh, um, one, suit, one suit doesn't fit all. You, know? so you have to have a solution, of course, but then you have to adjust it to, to your size, to your market, to your clients. And this is the big difference from us. And I think that's why we are winning clients more in Africa and Portugal, but we hope in Europe also. Um, and this is the big difference because we develop a solution that it's possible to adapt exactly to, to your data. We pick the data of, the of our customers, we analyze them and we develop models specific for this company. You know, this is nothing new. Every bank does it for credit risk, for example, but they don't do it for, for AML. And I think that's the best way of doing it. And this is a big difference because in other solutions, what happens is that you go there, you tune it, but it's a model they have developed and it's a suit for all, not, not, not a, a, a suit for you. So the ch it's a challenge, but also flexibility is a key word there. Of course, of course. Uh, every bank is a different bank, um, and we have to be the, the, the to, to have the capability of um, adjusting to the reality of, of this bank. You know, uh, and from the market to market, it's different. If we're talking in Europe, we have to be more careful with some kind of transactions, and we have some rules that are different from Angola or from Mozambique, of course. Now. Uh, I know that uh, you've mentioned some of those challenges. One of the other ones might be internationalization. Tell us how that works as far as your organization is concerned. Uh, um, our company uh, at this moment already is more international than national. We have 80% of our revenues come from the outside, uh, from the markets that we are uh, present. We are present in Europe, Africa and Asia with East Timor. Uh, of course, we have, uh, have the, the chance to, to start working with Portuguese speaking countries. That was helpful. Uh, but now we want to go a little bit more far away. Um, and we are working on that. So internalization is a goal. It's, the, 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 it's on, a, on the ADN of the company. Dixier is, it wants to be an international company and wants to be present uh, wherever it's possible. In 2018, we plan to open a new office in Benelux, probably in the Netherlands. Okay? Uh, but once again, recognition from the solutions that we have and from our service, it's really important so that we can enter on those markets. Why an English bank will buy uh, software from Portugal? That's something that you have to, 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 to think about it. So the only way of doing this is to be uh, present uh, in, in the markets, to be present with the regulators, to be present with the associations that uh, uh, conduct and organize this, these matters of AML or, or compliance. So that's the way we are going to do it. Now, a lot of people actually say outsourcing is a, a very good way to go. What's your approach to that? Yeah, outsourcing in... in, in in IT, in IT solutions, because 
we have a development inside of our company because we've developed a software. So if we have IT people, why not do not also have another business line? It was uh, uh, outsourcing. And why those companies should choose outsourcing and wh when they should choose outsourcing? I'm, I'm not a fundamentalist. So, uh, as sometimes you don't, don't go to outsourcing. You should do it inside with your own people. But uh, there are some companies that they have uh, specific needs uh, and they have to uh, be fast to deploy the solutions that they need. And if you are thinking in terms of you have to hire people, you start by recruiting people, then you have to train them, then you have to put them under your business and then they start developing. It's already five or six months that you have spent, money that you have spent on team and they will start producing probably in one or two more months. When you buy outsourcing, what we, what we can assure to you is that we have the right people with the right knowledge for your needs. So you will have it properly done, speci with special people, with specialized people, and you have a final product that will suit you. And at the end, it's the service that is provided. So that's the reason that outsourcing is important. So in a way, you, you touched upon my next point, which was uh, about tailoring solutions for individual yes. companies. This is something you obviously excel at. Yes, it's a little bit different from outsourcing, okay? Because uh, when it's outsourcing, and then let me go back for the, for the outsourcing. When outsourcing um, is, I put you the, the knowledge, the people with knowledge to develop what you need. But you are in control of that people. When you're talking about tailor-made solutions, it's different. You come to me and say, Rui, I need to do this, and I have these goals. I want this solution to perform several, several fun functionalities. I will talk to you, I'll understand your needs, and I'm responsible for developing exactly the solution that you need for your needs, to, to help you in, on your needs. So this is the big difference, okay? Outsourcing usually is you that manage the team and your goals and, and uh, solutions, uh, a tailor-made solution is, is uh, um, this way. Why is also important these tailor-made solutions? If you go to a market, for example, uh, um, let's talk about uh, um, CRM, for example. Every company needs CRM. Everybody now talks about CRM. You go to the market, you buy one of the 1,000 CRMs that are on the market, but then you have to adapt it to your own business. If you have, um, and this will take time and money. And sometimes it's less expensive and more productive to, to design something that it's really what you need. Mm. So that's the reason for the limits. And that's how it works, yes. Now, uh, you mentioned earlier on about uh, dealing with other Portuguese-speaking countries. Palop is, of course, the, the Portuguese-speaking nations of, of Africa. Uh, what, what exactly are your aims there in that region? Look, uh, uh, fortunately, uh, uh, we work with... Uh, um, we are missing one, one country, that's Guinea, Guinea-Bissau. Um, and the reason that we are not working there until now, um, I think there are two main reasons. First, uh, it's uh, political stability, it's not good. Okay? They are changing, there are also some revolutions from time to time, so mm. it's not easy to enter there. And also they have some French connection between, because of Senegal. Okay? So French uh, economy also has uh, uh, an importance on these markets. And it's probably the poorest economy of the, the Palops. Mm. But with all the other countries, uh, um, Angola, Mozambique, Cape Verde, São Tomé, Príncipe, uh, we are working with. Um, in Angola, we have now probably 40% share of the market in antimonial landric. Uh, we hope to get until the end of 2018 with uh, being leaders on the market, with 60 or 70% of the market of the banks working with us. Um, in Mozambique, we start operations later than, than, than in Angola, and we have um, good opportunities also, but then I have to fight against the, the, the Commonwealth because of South Africa. You know, mm -hmm. South Africa uh, makes border with, with uh, uh, Mozambique, so there's a lot of influence also. Um, São Tomé, Príncipe and Cape Verde, they are small markets. They, 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 it's important for us to be present, of course, uh, but look, it's a country with 400,000 people, so it's not, not a huge market. And if we talk about Santo Mayo Prince, even lower. But inside of the Palops, you also have an Asian country called East Timor. And East Timor, where we already have a market there and we are working with a bank there, it's important for us because it can open, open doors, for example, for Singapore or uh, for the Asian market. And that's more strategic, uh, East Timor, than the small countries in, in, in Africa. But nevertheless, if you perform well in Angola, if you perform well in, in Mozambique, you'll have, uh, um, you will open 
doors to go to other countries and that's the next point of internationalization. We are going to and we have prepared to, 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 to go there next year to start talking with some English-speaking countries like Tanzania, like Ghana, um, so that they also have needs and I think that we are already in a, in a mature company to go there and to present our solutions. So quite a bit of expansion on the cars. What would yes. you say your future plans for development actually are? Well. We, as I told you, are now near 50 people. Um, uh, we expect to open some new markets, um, as I told you, in Africa and in Europe. So we have two lines of business, uh, one of the outsourcing IT and one of the consulting. Uh, we hope to grow on double of the team on IT and on consulting, uh, we hope to grow a little bit less, 20 to 30 percent more. It also depends all the time when the, when the markets that we can open. Uh, uh, but. We have two strategies for different uh, uh, positions at this moment. IT outsourcing in Europe and opening an office in Benelux. Uh, we hire people in Benelux, not only Portuguese guys. We are not uh, um, work only with Portuguese people. And in Africa, still working on distance. We don't have offices in, in Africa, but we have permanent people going and traveling to Africa. So expanding to these countries. So I will say that uh, um, this year will grow up until we can go further in the markets. Uh, um, I would like to go to the end of 2020 and say to you that we are already 200 people. So let's see. And well, I hope happens. you'll be back to tell us. I hope, hope so that. also. <laughs> I hope be very good. The same. And in the meantime, thank you so much for coming to London it's and talking an to us today. Congratulations on the awards. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. A huge pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you.